You may not be able to see it closely, but the darker the red, the deeper the penetration of obesity, I believe. And the lighter colors are the uh, least obesity factor. There's percentages up there, but we need, need not talk about it. If I, if I might ask, why is the predominance of least penetration of obesity in the West? Jen? You know, that, that's a little bit of a, a, of a difficult question to answer. In part, it's some of those, you know, outdoor states, lots of sunshine, people get outside. It's a little bit of the kind of part of the lifestyle that people are more active, um, may pay attention a little bit more to diet. It's hard, it's hard to know. Life, I think, in the East and the Southeast is pretty stressful. Um, and then there's a different, uh, you know, ethnic population, uh, distribution of population. So there's higher obesity among African Americans in, in the U.S., um, among the Latino populations, um, although it's prevalent across, across the board. So that also probably has an influence. Okay, Dr. Townsend. You want to add to that, Dr. Voice? No, I think that's, uh, that's exactly correct. I mean, one would think that uh, somewhat in the Northeast with our pierogies and kielbasi and so on, <laughs> that we may have a little bit more likelihood here. But it's really widespread throughout the country. It's really the, the important issue. And if you look at maps from years previous, that map has changed in every segment of the country and has increased and gotten worse, a higher percentage of individuals getting uh, obese over the course of years from the information we saw really from the 1980s to now, which isn't it, really all that is long. Is the geographic time. distribution consistent through all those years? It, it varies somewhat, but it does tend to be consistent. I, I agree with, with Dr. Townsend. Uh, the socioeconomic aspects of it, the dietary habits. If you've ever been in the South and had chicken fried steak that's this big, you may understand that. Um, but those kinds of things impact as much as, as some of the uh, uh, ethnic groups as well. Okay. You, uh, we were having a little fun with Dr. Stahl earlier, and I think the audience watching would certainly want to ask this question, and you've pretty much started by uh, having fun with pierogies and all of that, it, foods indigenous to northeastern Pennsylvania. Dr. Stahl, is there anything unusual about the diet we have in northeastern Pennsylvania that makes it more prevalent, heart disease, that is, is and obesity? Is the diet here unique in terms of the penetration of obesity? I don't think so. I think every ethnic group has its favorite foods. Some of them are more healthful than others. The map shows you that over 38 states have 30 percent or more of the population who's obese. And Pennsylvania is just one of them. So I don't think we're different. It's a nationwide problem. What do you do to stay in shape? Hmm. Well, I, you know, I do I mean, like how, Is it hard for you or does it come naturally? Well, first of all, I have a wife who makes me very healthful <laughs> meals, and that's very important because <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty, like some of the other physicians have said, of eating on the run. You come home, you may have stood in one place all day, and you may have been stressed mentally, and you may come home and say, I'm really tired, therefore I must have exercised, but you didn't. So you do have to go exercise. You have to, walking is the best exercise. Okay. You haven't answered my question yet. And I like to swim, I like to bike, I like to run. <laughs> Dr. Voice, what do you do? Similar. Uh, actually, with Donna's guidance in the past, uh, developing a, a fitness program, you know, predominantly gym, some, some uh, resistance training, and just getting out with the, the family, walking is a, is a big part of it. And I think that's one of the important things the audience should know is you don't have to join a gym. You don't necessarily need a big fitness program. Just doing something simple like walking will help. So you're her patient? No, we, we had talked in the past. Not official <laughs> patient relationship. I mean, I've heard she's yeah. relentless. <laughs> she's Are very strict, relent but she is stricter with herself than, than with her, her patients. We've so had a lot of patients in common that I've referred to her, and that's, that's where we really but, had a lot of success. Right. But the goal is not, you know, how tough I can be on somebody. It's, it's getting them to goal. And someone doesn't want to hear, you know, people do want to hear that, you know, I'm not really that big, I'm not really that fat, and it's not really that bad. And I'm the one who, I guess, brings, brings your mirror out to you and says, no, you have a problem, let's address it, and I'll help you get to the goal. And at the end of the day, it's small, the small steps that we talk about. Do something different every day. Make a change in your food, make a change in your exercise. Okay, good night, everyone. Thank you all for watching, and to all of you as well. Education grants provided by Community Medical Center, the Commonwealth Medical College,
Edwards Life Science, American Heart Association,